Hello, so this is for the subject Church Financial Management and we are now on Chapter 7, Maintaining Sound Internal Controls. Okay, so let me read this first part here, a biblical example of internal control. Bible provides a clear example of internal control in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 18-21. to 21. And we are sending along with him the brother who is praised by all the churches for his service to the gospel. What is more, he was chosen by the churches to accompany us as we carry the offering, which we administer in order to honor the Lord himself and to show our eagerness to help. We want to avoid any criticism of the way we administer this liberal gift, for we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. Okay. So again, um, in the church, it's not only believers who attend the services, right? We have unbelievers with us and in a way they look to us for you know our testimony um what we do as believers as christians how we act how we conduct the church activities and the programs okay so with regards to you know financial um with regards to giving of course if they are giving then they also want to have that assurance that the church is using the money properly and that there's no fraud there's no corruption in the church so um they want it to be as transparent as possible right and in a way they can you know see it naman uh during our uh sunday activities we do provide food for the children we do provide them free jeepney service and then um other things you know like uh, supplies that we have for the crops and of course there's the nursery we have the supplies for the nursery and they can see as well that we do build the classrooms right the additional classrooms for the kids as well okay now what is the purpose of having internal controls or what are internal controls um internal controls are put in place to ensure that um the money or the property of the organization is being protected from any unpleasant uh, situation okay we're trying to prevent theft we're, pri we're trying to prevent fraudulent activities we're trying to prevent corruption of the money we're trying to ensure that they are being used for the purpose to which they are for which they are collected and then with regards to property we're trying to ensure that the properties are um protected from any damage you know uh, the children or anyone for that matter would not come to church to destroy uh the facilities or to destroy the property you know things like that right so internal controls are there to ensure the safety or to safeguard the property of the organization okay not just from natural causes but from acts of men as well okay and um we're also trying to ensure you know transparency we'd like to assure uh people that the assets are being protected okay that we do have internal controls in place now uh the bible passage that we read here essentially uh it's what we call balance and check we don't you don't want just one person handling uh the cash or handling the money of the church there must be two people so that they would balance each other they would check each other right that this person um is not she's not he or she is not going to pocket the money and then this other person he is also not going to pocket pocket any of the money right? they're not going to steal anything because they have each other as witness that they did their duty or responsibility properly okay so if you would notice whenever we do offering in the church okay there are two people uh what do you call this carrying the money from uh the hall uh towards the back you know for them to count the money and to safe keep the money in the boat or something okay and then the following day monday um when the bank when the banks are open so they would immediately 
uh, deposit the money into the bank, you know, because if they retain it in the office, there's a possibility that, you know, someone may come in, take the money, okay, so to, pre uh, to prevent it from happening, so they deposit it uh, to the bank immediately or as soon as possible, okay, so in a way that's a part or that's an example of internal control as well, okay, so um, that's the concept of internal Control. There's this one cause of Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Treasury Commission. Um, in a way, they do operate mostly in the U.S., but they do have um, international operations, international certifications, if you're familiar with ISO. Okay, I think they're the body giving the certification. But of course, their um, what do you call that? requirements are quite... Um, tedious as well to do, okay? Um, let's discuss this one. COSO's Integrated Framework for Internal Control states that internal control consists of five integrated components. Okay, so control environment, essentially it's the management itself, okay? Uh, the control environment is a set of standards, processes, and structures that provide the basis for carrying out internal control across the organization so essentially it would include the management the articles of incorporation the statement of bylaws uh, the statement of you know mission vision uh, purpose objectives um, and of course the policy okay if there's a manual that the church is um, adhering to or implementing for the you know operations so essentially those compose the control environment okay in the manual, of course, they have uh, different people doing their respective jobs. And then there is a segregation of duties. Different people are doing different things. And then, of course, they have that policy that uh, the, the money must be deposited into the bank as, up, as soon as possible. Okay, So Sunday collections deposited on Monday morning. Uh, Wednesday collections deposited on... Thursday morning and then all disbursements all expenses all payments would be in the form of cash or would be disbursed to a specific person who would um, liquidate or provide the receipts okay that they uh, spent the money on uh, the specified expenses okay if they paid it to the jeepney driver so they have that document uh, signifying the same Okay. If they use it to buy uh, food ingredients or supplies, then you have the receipt from the store that they did, in fact, bought the supplies. Okay, So, there are documents. Um, with regards to accounting, um, we do have accounting standards and we do have certain requirements. When recording transactions, documents are very essential. We call it um, physical evidences. Um, you can only record transactions that are properly supported by documents. You you can't record a transaction if there is no evidence. So the evidence must be available. Okay, if you paid your workers, you have the pay slip or the payroll report wherein the workers signed their name that they did in fact receive the money. So you have that you know records available, documents available before you record the transaction okay so in a way it's also a balance and check okay so there are certain uh, rules or guidelines being followed um, for conducting each activity or each transaction or paying off and um, collecting the money okay so in a way all of that comprise the control environment Okay, next is the risk assessment. Risk assessment involves a dynamic and iterative process for identifying and assessing risk to the achievement of objectives. Okay, so risk assessment, um, is there a possibility that the money would be stolen? Okay, if so, um, what can we do to prevent that? So do we have a cash vault in the office? Do we lock it? Do we lock the office itself? Do we restrict access to the office? Only workers are allowed inside and then any visitors or any students 
can only you know uh, <laughs> there's that division right there's only a receiving area for them they can't you know enter they can't access things like that right um not only for physical assets or physical properties but also records um we record should also be protected right because you know they might be prone to changes in the records what do you call that uh deletion of the record so there are those things okay and then other risk assessment maybe damage the property so that's why we have security guards or the men patrolling the area making sure that no outsider would get in during uh let's say during the night or outside of you know the conduct of the activities okay um next we have control activities control activities are the actions established through policies and procedures that help ensure management directives are carried out to mitigate risk to the achievement of objectives so again um internal controls normally the objective would be to safeguard the assets and the records okay control activities again would include policies procedures um, next, information and communication. Relevant and quality information must be communicated in a continual, iterative process of obtaining, providing, and sharing. Okay, so in a way, we do want to provide reports on the state of you know the finances of the church. So we do have um, at least annual financial report or financial statement, right? And you want to prepare them in a timely manner. So we have deadlines, April 15 for the BIR, April 30, I think, or April 28 for the SEC. So the information must be available beforehand for the audit, for the checking, and then for the preparation of the financial reports. And then the financial reports must be made available to the management so that they can see they can check what's our statement, uh, what's our financial position, what's our liquidity status, and then if we have uh, changes that we can uh, make to improve our financial situation. So the information must be available and they must be communicated properly to the management or to the decision makers. Okay, Because the management are the decision makers, they're going to uh, have to make the decision if you know any changes needs to be made. Um, if there are any how are we going to plan next year's you know budget or something or are we going to add new projects how many missionaries are we going to support things like that and then last we have monitoring activities monitoring activities consist of ongoing and separate evaluation to ascertain whether each of the components of internal control is present and functioning so essentially this is um just making sure that the internal controls are in place and they are doing what they're supposed to do okay prevent uh any untoward situation from happening okay ensuring the safety or safeguarding the assets of the organization uh how practical applicability of internal control for churches system of checks and balances necessary to protect the church from intentional or an intentional acts that could cause a loss of the church's financial assets or that could result in misreporting of the church's financial information okay intentional of course there's your you know intentional desire to steal from the church from the money or intentional desire to damage the property an intentional would be let's say errors in recording the amounts let's say collection is fifty thousand and then in recording they only pressed five zero 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 okay uh lacking one zero so you know it's unintentional but um it may cause a you know misrepresentation in the financial information so that's why we do have uh balance in check uh, someone prepares the document and then another person reviews or checks it or audits it so that they can catch those uh, types of, you know, uh, errors, okay, unintentional acts, okay. Don't add the, oh, sorry, before we read. Um, 
internal control matters most relevant and most commonly addressed focus here is on internal control matters related to again safeguarding of assets particularly in connection with cash transactions relevant and timely reporting compliance with applicable laws and regulations normally the reports are needed to be you know submitted to regulatory authority so that's the compliance part with applicable laws and regulations stone at the top um for churches of course we have the belief of the management the church leaders so they must have this tone or in a way kind of a statement or explicit uh, statement that we are not going to engage in any you know fraudulent activity questionable activity we're not going to do anything that might question the integrity of our organization okay or of the leadership of the church or management of the church okay because if they kind of you know tolerate or if they kind of um allow uh certain activities to happen like um let's say non-liquidation of expenses um advances to workers without proper liquidation or without proper authorization so that might be in a questionable so you don't want that to happen so make sure that their policies are there and that they are being uh followed or implemented if your church is led by people who do not respect sound internal control, financial integrity, and legal compliance, you should find a different church quickly. So again, um, implementation of guidelines or you know internal controls. If the church leadership is like, nah, let's you know do away with the liquidation. I don't want to make a liquidation report, or do away with um, what they call this, uh, depositing it in the bank. Just keep the money here. In the office so you know it's like they're not respecting uh sound internal control financial integrity and legal compliance so uh again kind of questionable so it's better if the church leadership is uh adhering to the rules and regulations and if they are implementing sound internal control okay i'm gonna pause here because it's already 17 minutes um we're going to continue with uh other types of internal controls.